Welcome to the Foreclosure Deals Coach Podcast. I'm your host, Donnie Korn, the Foreclosure Deals Coach. And on this show, I'm super excited to discuss mindset with Ace Haggerty, a superhero by design who's also in real estate and is going to help you to get your mind in the right place to do your first investment deal. Let's get the show started. the Foreclosure Deals Coach Podcast, where we discuss the mindset, tactics, and tools to become a successful foreclosure investor with my 5F system. One of the great parts about having a podcast like this is bringing on experts in the real estate field. And obviously, as a real estate show, we discuss a lot of the semantics of real estate. But as you're about to hear today, I have Ace Haggerty on the show. And Ace is big into the mindset of doing real estate investing through a superhero by design program. Without further ado, let's bring on Mr. Ace Haggerty. What's going on, Ace? Hey, Donnie. Thank you for being here. Thank you for inviting me, man. I am so stinking excited. I got to get my energy levels up because you are on fire this morning and I'm so excited. I'm telling you, man, I, I'm always at this level or better. It's not the coffee though. I thought it was the caffeine, but I actually don't drink coffee. So this is like a natural high. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. We'll find out shortly. That's right, man. Well, I can agree with the no caffeine and I am so excited to share my journey, my story with your listeners because it is truly amazing what I have been through and what I've been able to push through just using mindset. And I know you talk a lot about mindset and I am just so excited to share my story to help inspire and empower your listeners. Well, let's do that, Ace. Let, let's hop right in. Listen, you're, you're the superhero by design. I would love to hear your backstory. How did you come to be? Obviously, you're also a real estate investor because that's what the show is all about. But tell me a little bit about superhero by design and how you've kind of ca- combined the mindset requirements with your real estate investment business. I'm dying to hear your story. No, I'd love to. I'd love to. So my journey, I've been in real estate for about 10 years. It's been, it's been a, a up and down ride. It's been a lot of fun, lots of wins, some losses, made money, lost money. But about a year and a half ago, I was running three separate businesses. So before the show, I told you I'm a structural engineer by trade. So I had a structural engineering business. Yep. I was obviously doing real estate as well. I was at the time I was with a couple partners and we were doing out of state turnkey property flips, essentially do the burr strategy. Once they're rented, sell them to investors as turnkey rental properties. So I had that business. And then thirdly, I am currently also a developer. So like a lot of entrepreneurs, people that are very just, you know, hit the ground running work, you know, we trade in our W2 for 40 hours a week to work for ourselves for a hundred hours a week. And I was (laughs) one of those stories and I did that for a long time. And the thing that really turned my life upside down is my wife approached me and she was like, Hey, if you don't clean up your mess of a life and she was right, it was a mess of a life at that time. If you don't clean this up, we're done. I'm getting divorced. I'm leaving. And that was the lowest point of my life. That was about 18 months ago. And I knew at that point, I really had to take control of my life because not only was it that I was working so long going out of state. I'm in Nashville, Tennessee, and I was going down to Georgia, up to Ohio, doing the out of state stuff. Meanwhile, having to run an engineering company, it was a solo entrepreneur company. So company of one. Uh, And so needless to say, my businesses were starting to have less of a good return. Businesses were going down. I was gaining a lot of weight. My marriage obviously was deteriorating. And that's the problem that a lot of us achievers find ourselves in is we want to do so much and we want to build so much and we want to build and give and and do all these great, amazing things. But what we don't realize is stretching yourself out like that, there's going to be little cracks that happen in your life. And then those little cracks turn into bigger and bigger cracks. And I found in every part of my life that was happening and thank goodness she had enough foresight and enough strength to come to me and say, Hey, you need to fix yourself or else this is over. And I, I 
didn't take any offense. I knew at that time, if I did not just make a change in my business or make a change in my diet and exercise, no, I had to make massive amounts of change in a very short window or else my marriage of 12 years is over as I know it. And I got, I got to jump in there, man, because I, I mean, yeah, great story. And I'm, I'm going to, you know, I'm a little emotional here because, you know, we did 47 flips, my wife and I, in a year. And obviously by design, your wife is your business partner, whether you want her to be, because she's your life partner, right? So you're making money together. You're living together. You're kind of working together, even if you're not in the same field. And here we are 47 flips in. And a lot of the same stuff was happening. Like our, the, our marriage was borderline on the rocks. We're making all this money, but we didn't have any in enjoyment or we or the marriage was deteriorating all the stuff that you you mentioned there she comes to you she says you got to turn this around what happens next how did, how did you make that mental shift internally to get it turned around and save your marriage and stay in the business at the same time yeah no that's a great question and so i did what uh what what i had to do i turned at that time i would i had a coach and a mentor a life coach and a business coach. And I turned to them and I'm like, Hey guys, like I need to get this stuff. I need to put my life back together. And my coach does this thing called the hundred day challenge. He does it every year. He gets a group of people together. And if any of your listeners know Andrew Frisella and 75 hard, it's like 75 hard, but that's child's play compared to what this hundred day challenge is. And so to break it down, long story short, there's eight categories of our life. There's health and fitness, emotions and meaning, relationships, our uh, spiritual walk, our, um, our career. And so I looked at all those eight things and I was like, man, I am not doing well in any one of those categories right now, <laughs> varying degrees, obviously, but I wanted to improve in all of them. And I knew that if I didn't do everything I could, my life was, was going to go down the toilet and I did not want that to happen. So I reached out to my coach. He's like, Hey, we're doing this hundred day challenge next month. Like you haven't done it years past. And I, <laughs> to his, uh, to his, uh, his words, I, I didn't do it in the past. I pushed it off because it seemed too difficult. And at this point I finally had the leverage. And so I went to him and he actually said, I told him I wanted to save my marriage and that was the leverage I needed. He's like, dude, you need something even deeper than that. And I was like, deeper than my marriage. This got me to rock bottom. And he's like, bro, you need to go deeper than that. And I thought about it for, for, for a bit. And I was like, man, if I can't do what I say, I'm going to do for a hundred days and it's going to be hard. Don't get me wrong. It's going to be early mornings, late nights for a hundred days. But in the grand scheme of things, a hundred days is nothing. And if I can't do that, then what am I even doing this for? And so when I started to think about it like that, I got the leverage I needed. And for me being a spiritual man, I'm a Christian man. I was going to lose my soul. I leveraged my soul. If I didn't do everything I said I was going to do for the hundred days, that why am I even here? Why am I even busting my butt in the grand scheme of life? And so that I knew. And so that was why I was doing it. And then I figured out also what I wanted to do. How, you know, what do I need to have different in my life a hundred days from now? So I figured out what I want. I figured out why I wanted to keep the leverage, to keep the fire going for these hundred days. And then I just worked with my coach on how to get it done. And I kid you not, I talk about it in my book. It's on, uh, you can get a free e-copy of it on my website, superherobydesign.com. Really easy, free ebook. Definitely take advantage of it because not only does it tell my story about the hundred days, but it also, go, I give tons of tools and tricks. So I do mindset, but I also give you the tools that you can simply put into your life to do exactly the same thing. Shit, probably people can do twice as much as what I did in, in that hundred days. But what I was just to give your listeners a little bit of a snippet, what I was able to do in that hundred days is I wrote the book superhero by design. I got the first draft, all 150 pages done, never written a book before, but I put in the time. I didn't even know what I was going to write about. It kind of just came as, as it went, but I knew I had to write 350 words a day and I had to do research for about 60 to 90 minutes a day because I was writing on a subject I didn't know much about. All I knew is I needed to figure out how people had superheroes or superpowers and how they use it in their lives. And that's how the book came about. So I was doing all that. I wrote the book. I dropped 45 pounds. I was down to about 7% body fat. I was wow. more in shape. I, I was 38 at the time. 
I'm 40 now, but I am in the best shape of my life. I dropped down 45 pounds, 7% body fat. I was lifting more at the gym than I ever lifted before. I was running faster than I ever ran before. And I ran marathons and such when I was in my twenties and I was killing my PRs at almost knocking on 40 at the time. And I was able to do all these things. I consolidated my businesses. I got bought out of one business. I got um, rid of another business so I could focus on the development. And that made all the difference in my business life. I cut down my hours. I was making more money. I was more productive. And I completely, I, if I look at myself from the end of that 100 days to the beginning of that 100 days, it was a completely different person. Because wow. when I was taking daily action every morning, every afternoon, and every evening, doing the things I said I was going to do, holding myself accountable, holding myself ac accountable to God, that's when everything started to change. And my life started to change. Everything around me started to change because I started from the inside out. And with that, my confidence went through the roof. I never, I have a podcast, Superhero by Design as well. And I never even would have started a podcast if it wasn't for that 100 day challenge. I started that shortly after the 100 day challenge. And that has completely changed my life as well. Just doing great things for people and really being able to give back. It's just such a blessing that just short hundred days can change your life trajectory, not a little bit, but a lot. And I am proof of that. And I have helped other people do that as well. And it's just so remarkable to see what people are capable of doing when they believe in themselves and they take daily action to do it. Wow. I mean, I mean there's so much to cover there, Ace. I mean, you, you covered a lot of ground there. I, 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 I want to touch on the spirituality aspect of it because I'm, I'm a Christian myself. I'm a believer. You're setting out on this thing. And, and obviously, we got it. We want to tie real estate back into it. But how does real estate and faith for you, how, how do they conjoin? I mean, obviously, God's not, God didn't go out there and say, let there be deals, right? But God is obviously a big part of your, your marriage, a big part of your business, the things that you do. So how did you how was the spirituality, especially at the beginning of the hundred days, how did that tie in daily prayer and meditation? Tell me how you assimilated those two into your faith with, with your real estate business. Yeah. So right before the challenge, I was struggling with some business decisions that I ultimately took care of during the hundred days. However, I was, I was really struggling and I was working with my coach who is a great man of faith himself as well. And he asked me a question. He was like, he's like, Ace, let me ask you a question. I was like, all right, what you got? He's like, are you smarter than God? <laughs> Go and at that, that one. yeah, at that point, <laughs> right? you know, at that, at that point, you know, I was still wishy-washy on my faith walk and everything, but that question was so easy to answer. That was, of course, I was like, well, of course I'm not smarter than God. Why would you, you know, no, no. And he said, then why are you acting like it? And I was like, I love that. boom, I always say, God smack, like, boom. Right. I was just like, <laughs> Literally. It, hit, it hit me like a ton of bricks. I was just like, of course I'm not smarter than God. Then why am I trying to be smarter than him? And why am I struggling so much with this business decision? Just give it to him. He will tell yes. me what needs to happen. Have the faith that everything will work out. Stop consuming myself with the what ifs or the stories. Garner, if you give I it to him, that. let go, let yep. go. And yep. he will, he will guide you. He will take you. It's all part of his plan. And ever since I was asked that question, my faith walk has been completely different. And it, it, it's crazy when you let go, how much more control you have in your life. And that's of all things, whether or not you're a Christian, whether or not, uh, you believe in God or Allah or Buddha or whatever, it doesn't matter. But once you start to let go that's when you can really start taking control. It sounds so counterintuitive, but anyone that, that really is successful in life has learned at least to some degree of how to let go and let things do what they do. You can only control one person in this world and that's yourself. And once I learned that, that by itself flipped the script and completely was a game changer for me. And my life has never been the same since. And once you do that, you can never, you can't unsee it anymore. You can't. Yeah. Once you've let 
go. It's like getting getting that perception of control back isn't going to happen again because you let it go and things happen as a result of letting it go. It, it is such a mind map. It, it's so weird to discuss that. When did how did you get started in real estate? Like when when did that when was your beginning process in the investing side of this? Well, I I love you that you asked that because it was about close to ten years ago. A buddy of mine came up to me who was a broker and he's like, "Hey man, I got this short sale," and I'm like short sale. Is that like a, flea, a short sale? Is that, a, <laughs> is that a flea market thing? Like, I, I, I don't know what a short, <laughs> short sale is. He's like, it's kind of like a foreclosure, but it's these people are in pre foreclosure and we have the opportunity to help them out so that they don't go bankrupt. They don't get their credit completely wiped out for the next decade. And he kind of walked me through the process. I was working for a contractor at the time. And that's why he came to me because he knew I had construction experience. And okay. I, I knew how to run crews. I knew how to rehab houses and things like that, but I never thought of doing it as a side hustle or as a, a business itself. I watched at that time, Chip and Joanne Gaines. I was a big fixer upper <laughs> fan, but that, <laughs> that was the extent of, of my knowledge of, of house sure. flipping and all that. But he came to me, long story short, we did a short sale and in a short sale, you have to wait 90 days before when you buy it, before you can sell it again. And so that right. gave me 90 days and it was like a lipstick rehab. It was, you know, pretty simple, easy, nothing major. And so it gave me 90 days to do that, that flip. And I used my guys, I did some sweat equity. So I got in there and pounded hammers myself, worked nights wow. and weekends, did it as a side hustle. And the great thing is 90 days later, we got it on the market, it sold. And we ended up walking away net 90 K on that deal. 45, wow. 45, That's a hell of a first deal, Ace. Oh yeah. Well, Hey, yeah. You know, after that much, uh, profit, you think I would have jumped feet first into real estate full time, but being a, a structural engineer and being very conservative financially and all of that, it took me a while to actually, uh, dive into real estate more, but you know what, that, that was my journey. Hey, having a W2 is fantastic while being involved in real estate. Banks love it. You've got money coming in. You can do it on the side as a side hustle, get your expertise that way. We always say there's no better university than actually taking a project on. And so I'm totally down for people to keep their W-2. So I, I kind of make a joke that I should have jumped into it, but honestly, everything happens the way it should happen. Um, and so, yeah, it happened the way it was supposed to. And that was my first one. And yeah, it was, a, it was a pretty much a foreclosure deal 10 years ago and still today. Look at that. And, and here you are today on the Foreclosure Deals Coach podcast. Man, that's, that's, that's awesome. Good for you. So let, let's jump. A, a lot of the reason we wanted to do this show together, we talked a little bit before the recording, is that this is a mindset thing, right? People get into real estate investing and don't realize that's the semantics of buying low fixing it up and selling a property are actually pretty easy, right? It's not rocket science. If, you, if you're buying it right, you're doing your analysis properly, that part's easy. What gets in the way, in my experience, is mindset. And this superhero by design thing, I mean, you're, you're getting up every morning with a mindset thing. So I'd like to kind of apply your strategies in, in the mindset to my 5F strategy and see how you handle each step in this. So obviously, you got to find deals and you're still actively looking for deals now, right? So you're, you're actively buying. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. I am never not buying that. That is something I know things are crazy right now with interest rates and you gave a, you gave a phenomenal show on this recently, but always, are you going to sit on the sidelines or are you going to play in the game of life? And I, I choose to play in the game of life every single day or else I'm, I'm going backwards and I'm never going to go backwards ever again. Cause even if you're standing still, the world keeps on moving, man. So you standing still, you're actually going backwards. So finding deals. I am definitely not the expert on how to find deals. I've tried over my career. And what I learned over the last 10 years is whatever you're not really good at, guess what? There's, somebody. there's somebody out there that's really <laughs> good at it and that loves to do it. I didn't love to. I, I love the construction side of it. I love the rehab. I love looking at a house and finding out what needs to be fixed or how we can, you know, yes. do crazy things, take walls out, do an addition or, or whatever, build up, build forward. And so that's what I love to do. So what I did after about the first five years of my career, I finally started okay. to partner up with people that really knew how to find deals and they found deals and they found good deals. I, in, in the span of three years with that turnkey rental company, we did 250 
turnkeys in three years. So that's incredible. I found a 250. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. I found a guy who was really good at finding deals. That's for darn sure. And I partnered with him. You know, this wasn't what market was that in? Where did you find those 250 deals? So we started off in Columbus, Georgia. So 90 minutes out of Atlanta, we found a good sub market. My simple criteria, hundred thousand people or more. And it met, it met that criteria. It had a lot of hospitals. So people were coming in uh, and yeah, just, it, w- it was a good rental market for what, what the entry cost was to get into these houses. And it, the numbers just made sense. And so we, uh, we found the deals, we had a realtor out there. So we didn't even physically have to go out there all the time. I, I did go there quite a bit. Uh, and I can get into that later why, but we were able to do things out of state and we could have done it fully remote, honestly. Um, but yeah, we, he was it's a great. trust thing, right? You have to build that trust to be able to do deals sight unseen. That's a big part of what I teach in the coaching is we just did a deal with a client who's still stationed in Poland right now. And they did a complete flip deal on a property they'd never seen, but it, it takes a little bit to build the trust to do that. Right. Oh yeah. And in that business, I learned trust is everything. People is everything. And you got to one set up the right expectations for those people, but also to have a system in place where you can monitor them and set certain expectations on progress, budget, all of that. Because if you don't set that up and monitor it, it is, that's how human nature is. It's going to go haywire. So you got to set up those expectations on the front end and then hold those people accountable for what they said they were going to do. Those are such huge lessons because when you do it out of state, you have to have those in place because you can't physically be there to see what's going on. Absolutely. So, I mean, we covered fine and kind of your mindset on that deal analysis. Tell me how you do that. How do you apply your, your superhero mindset to deal analysis? And when you're analyzing a deal, what criteria are you looking for? Yeah. So, um, I, I haven't flipped in, in quite a while. Like I said, I'm doing development now sure. and as things change, your criteria will change. It, it is what it is. Interest rates. Absolutely. Yeah. Even a year ago, interest rates were half of what they are right now. And so it, it depends. You got to stay flexible. Um, I love when bigger pockets came out with their burst strategy. Um, mm-hmm. because I was doing that since day one. It's so funny. You, right. You're in this business long enough. Yeah, they just named something we were doing anyway. Yeah, right? Remember I, that? yeah, we all kind of knew about it. The bigger pockets like took credit for it. I was like, I was already doing that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So when we were doing turnkeys, that's what we did. What we raised private money too. My partner was phenomenal at raising private money. That was another superpower of his. So he found the properties, he raised the money, I rehabbed them, and then we sold them to investors. And so um, our criteria when we would run our numbers is, okay, what's the purchase price? What's the rehab price? How much are we going to have to raise? What's our holding cost? And when we sell this to an investor, what's going to be the profit? So let's say the house is 50,000. We put 25 into it. So we're up to 75. The money is going to cost another 10,000. So we're at 85. Well, what's, what's going to be the ARV to an investor? Well, if it rents out for a thousand, eleven hundred dollars which houses around there, we would get them. We do them nice. And actually they'd rent out for 1200. So we'd sell the property, depending where it was, what part of the town we would sell it usually anywhere from 110 to 135, 140. And we would walk away. I think our profit margin on each house we flipped, we wanted at least 15,000 as well. So we had a minimum exit profit that we wanted. And so we just had very simple criteria and we just followed it to a T and there was enough of a margin in there in case like the rehab went over or the time to rehab it and sell it took longer and we're paying our investors more. So we had a little bit of fluff built into it as well. But the great thing about having numbers and sticking to that formula is it makes the yes or the no to the purchase black and white. You know what's going to work and what's going to not work. Because when I first moved to Nashville about five, five and a half years ago, I thought I'd be Mr. Nashville flip this house type guy. And I lost 35 grand on my first flip. And it was the biggest eye opener because the margins were so small that at that sure. time I had my margins and you know what rehab went way up. We found a few things. Uh, I didn't control my contractors. Like I said, I didn't set the right expectations and monitor the, them as well as I should have, even though I lived in that town. Um, and so I, 
lost 35 grand. And after that, I was like, that you know what? My numbers are going to have to be rock solid. I'm going to have to build a factor of safety into it. I'm going to have to set right expectations and continue to monitor the schedule and crack the whip when you have to crack the whip. This is real life. This isn't play around. Like you have to not be scared of confrontation. At that time, I was so afraid of confrontation, but that's, that's part mindset. That's where you have that's to that's almost all mindset is I, you really you're hurting the contractors the crews the investors if you can't stand up to that situation your mindset and on is you're being polite you're actually hurting yourself because you're not taking that 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 necessary tone to get the work done so i love that your mindset was able to shift on that into getting getting the work done that's awesome that's awesome I want to, I want to kind of, uh, get, how do they get in touch with you, Ace? I know you've got, you've got this free book. Let's pop that up real quick uh, where they can go out to superhero by design and register there to get your free book, um, and learn more about how to transform your life and that hundred day strategy. And, you know, obviously life changing stuff over a hundred days, a lot of applicability to the real estate market. Well, what kind of parting words would you tell people who want to get into coaching, who want to start into real estate investing, but don't know where to go? to because their mindset's in the way, how do, how would you tell somebody specifically wanted to flip a house, how to overcome that mindset and do a deal? Yeah. I would say the biggest things to do, start going to your local RIA, start meeting people that are in this industry, learn as much as you can. So that includes buying books. You don't have to take the courses. I honestly, every course I've taken, uh, don't spend 35, 45, $50,000 on a core on, you know, some guru or anything like that. No offense to them. They are really good at making money, but they're not good at making you uh, deal, get deals. So Amen. I would say read as much as you can. Go to the local RIA and then hire a coach, not, not a guru, but a coach who can coach you not only on the strategies, but also help coach you on the mindset as well. And, yes. and with that, you will get your first deal faster than you think you can. And that's what at, we do for sure. Yeah. And at the same time, in addition to learning about real estate, you're going to be working on the most important real estate. And that's the six inches between your ears. Like mindset is 80% of this business. 20% yep. is the strategy. So if you're focusing on bettering yourself, improving, that is going to be what propels you forward in this industry. I love that. I, I, all so accurate because so much of my coaching clients coming in, they think it's about doing the deal. And obviously I, I'm really good at finding deals for clientele, but most of what we're facing in the coaching side of this is the mindset. So I'm constantly referring to them. This is how you think about it. And I really think your book's going to be a great addition to that, encouraging people to really do that mindset reset over a period of time. But you nailed it. Getting coaching, getting people into a program that's going to you know, push all your concerns aside and walk you through that first deal. It clearly worked for you getting a partner, which is in essence a coach. It's working for all of my clients and getting coaching right now. You got to have somebody standing there with you to get you through this mindset stuff. Am I right? Oh yeah. hundred percent. Because you're, you're going to only go as far as where your mindset is, and then you're going to hit a brick wall. And if you're not able to break through that wall or have a coach who can remove that obstacle for you, you're not going to yep. move forward. I don't care how hard you work, how many hours you work. Trust me, I've been there. I've done that. And until I started to really turn my life around and improve myself, nothing else was going to change everything on the exterior. You got to start on the interior first, and then the exterior is going to take care of itself. That's how life works. Absolutely. I love that. I love that. Ace, uh, so many great nuggets of knowledge here today. Uh, once again, people can head out to your superhero by design.com to get a free copy of your ebook, uh, the superhero by design book, and, and really dive into their mentality, their mindset on this. Uh, how well, what, are, what are the parting words can you leave people with? Obviously, they should go get the book, but what else would you tell them to do to really get on their mindset stuff today? Oh, man, I would just start by your morning rituals. What's one thing you can add to your morning, whether it's a, a cold water immersion, focus, breathing, meditation, prayer, planning out your, your day in the morning, just add one thing to your morning that you can do consistently. They, uh, there's so many good books on habits and micro habits. There's the book atomic habits, just do one thing every morning. And it doesn't have to be anything big. If you want to start exercising more, just focus on putting your running shoes on and stepping outside. You don't even have to go running or walk around the block, start with something simple, start with something easy 
And that's how you start building up wins. That's how you start building up momentum. And once that starts to get built up, man, oh, people better watch out for you. I love it. I love it. Well, Ace, it has been great to have you on the show. We're going to wrap up with that. Guys, the, the opportunity out there to get into real estate is everywhere. You meet people from every walk of life. Anybody can do the real estate thing. What's stopping you, as I'm sure Ace would agree, is the mindset. Do yourself a huge favor. Head out to SuperheroByDesign.com. Download the free book. Learn how to change your mindset and get going. And then if you're ready to do your first deal, if your mindset's already in the spot that it's time to get a deal done, obviously I'd be honored to be your real estate investment coach. Ace, love to having you on the show. Thank you so much for the time. People are going to be jumping out and grabbing your book. Are there any other things that they can get in touch with you if they have further questions or can reach out to you? Yeah. Anybody reach out to me. My email is ace at superhero by design.com. I answer all emails myself. So definitely reach out if you have any questions or just want to get on a conversation. And then I also have a podcast superhero by design as well, where I interview just amazing people who are living living mission driven lives where they are really doing wonderful things and changing the world. And it's all, that's all I'm about these days. I love real estate. I'm going to continue to do it, continue working in real estate, but being able to help empower people and change their lives so that they can do the same thing, pay it forward. There's nothing else like that. I love that. That's beautiful. It's a beautiful mission. It's a beautiful message. Thank you so much for the time, Ace. I really appreciate it. Guys, the, the market's changing. There's always opportunities in the marketplace, but now is the time to get into investing. Make sure your mind's in the right place. Download this book. Get going on that. But for now, thank you so much for tuning in the show. Once again, Ace, thank you so much for being on the show. Really appreciate having you. And as always, guys, remember, don't buy a house, buy a deal. Thank <laughs> you.